to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, welcome in. Monday, September 9th, the Fantasy Footballers, Mike. Right is here. Jason Moore is present and accounted for. I'm Andy Holloway, and we are with our powers combined. <laughs> <laughs> we are Captain Planet. Um, deep breaths, everybody. Whoo! Yeah. So we have a lot to react to. Happy to have you with us. Of course, uh, we may be your therapist for the morning. We'll find out. But uh, Monday, Punday on today's show, ready to roll, news to talk about, studs and duds on the show, and it's going to be a doozy. So much to discuss. We have, uh, you know, our first, we got one more game. We got Monday Night Football. Aaron Rodgers is going to give it another go on Monday night. Good for him. And it's against the 49ers, so it should be a pretty entertaining game. How are you feeling emotionally after the first week of football? Personally? Yeah, personally. Outstanding. You're feeling great. Mike, how are you feeling emotionally after the first week of football? Oh, man. Uh, pretty good. Oh, awesome. Oh, really? Pretty, yeah, pretty good. That You see, your face betrayed it for about three days. Because I won everywhere except the most important league. Yeah. Yeah, that, it, so, it is It is funny how much that – that is the only thing that matters at the so end. So, when you lose your most important league and things went really bad and just continue to get worse throughout the uh, entire week for that team, but the rest of your squads are doing really good. So, the overall, pretty good. I am happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear you're doing well. Uh, there was the normal fantasy football reaction this weekend, which – in week one is always about 97% negative <laughs> because somehow week one, like if you saw the NFL season broken up on one of those like line charts of importance to your emotional health, week one fills about half of the season for fantasy football reaction because we are, you know, one game sample. If it's week seven of the season, doesn't really matter. People don't pay attention to that to define the whole year. But in week one right now, we're going to walk you through it and talk about things that we think were really, really valuable and important and things that you should probably just, like, don't even think about. Yeah. Just let it go. Now, were you laughing at the thought of letting it go, Mike? Oh, yeah. That's not possible. <laughs> I will hold on to that rage as tight as I can. And nobody turned the injuries toggle off again this year. So we have to talk about injuries as well because they suck. They yeah. they really suck. So we've got those to talk about. But we always kick things off with the contributions of the Foot Clan in the most sophisticated way possible. Mm -hmm, yes. We have our good and bad Monday Punday to kick off the 2024 season. So we'll start with the good. These were hard to find, <laughs> at least in your reaction to the no, weekend. No, 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 no. I found them all. Opposed to me in the League of Records. <laughs> well, let's go then, Mike. Go ahead and kick it off. Ooh, score, Quan Barkley. That one's terrible. Who put that one in? Well, how about this one? Ramonster Stevenson. Yes. And, of course, guys, I told you about him. Uh, Jay Amazing Williams. Or about Jay Wynn Daniels. My favorite player of the week, Lad McCockwee. <laughs> and, uh, wow, JK Three Legs. Oh, no. <laughs> Brock. Powers, Jaden Ridiculous. All right, it's time for the bad. Yeah. It's time for the bad. We've got, uh, there were about 50 of different variants <laughs> here, but let's go with Starvin oh. Harrison Jr. Or Trey McDyde. Or Amina St. Brown. Nah, man. Nah. And uh, we got Bust oh. Edwards. Chris. Uh-oh. Lave. <laughs> <laughs> Nausea Harris. Oh. DK Metcrap. Dalton Kinfade. You got uh, fake, fake London and Puka Nakua. Oh, that okay. one I don't like on a deep, deep, 
deep personal level. You were you were going through it last night with the Puka injury. Now is that because you have he's one of your highest like rostered, most exposed situations? Yep, that would be why. He's uh he's in the Puka. majority Yeah, he's in the majority of uh my important leagues. Was well, was in the majority of my important leagues. He'll be and back. Right? He'll be back, but not this week. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Do we have any updates on Puka? No, not no no definitive. Uh, I, you know what we do have updates are they are on Jake Ferguson. We, we have more updates on Jake Ferguson than we can shake a stick at. I mean, it was it was all day yesterday. Thank you, sleeper. <laughs> Questionable. We get it. <laughs> if I we was, get it. I was notified uh, many many times that Ken Walker. I had hope they pay hurt. per notification. <laughs> I hope their server bill is through the roof. Um. And then on top of that, not just them, but today it has been very snip, snap, snip, snap with Jake Ferguson, but we'll get to that later. Yeah, we have some updates on Jake Ferguson. We're waiting on Puka. There's going to be more but by the time we have to talk about him. Let's start with some ready to roll. Welcome to Ready to Roll, presented by Nissan. Well, uh, it can be incredibly tough in week one to get proper context on what took place. We've got all those emotional investments, those hopes, those dreams, all the research, all the prior opinions. And so we want to zoom out a little bit on Ready to Roll today, give you that 10,000-foot view so we can gain some perspective, so we can understand what took place. And there were a couple major, major kind of uh, league-wide uh, points, stats that that kind of were very interesting this week, and it really felt like you never got served the main course when it came to the passing yardage in these games. It was kind of ridiculous. The week one average, guys, 200 passing yards. That's, that's not great. That's not a lot. I mean, you had the very bottom of the list, Caleb Williams, if you told me game winning quarterback 93 passing yards from Caleb Williams that you get to try <laughs> to distribute amongst DJ Less and Roma Dunze and Keenan, Keenan Allen. Fatlin. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. Allen was one of the high, I think he was the highest target share player of the week. He was not. No? I think that was Michael Pittman. You're right. It was Pittman, but Allen was up there. Oh, yeah. But 93 passing yards, you're not going to get anything out of 93 and zero. But, I mean, look at some of the other players. 144 for Justin Herbert, okay? Kyler, 162. Trevor yeah. Lawrence, 162. Joe Burrow, 164. Um, Dak? Dak was 179. Yeah, I mean, that was that game was out of hand early. Yeah, that's the Cleveland Browns' fault. It felt like Dak Prescott was about to... He looked on he fire was, to start the game. He was about to give like, us a game, oh, and, this, then, and then the Browns and Watson just... There was, they couldn't do anything. I want you to name the two quarterbacks with three or more touchdowns this week. Oh, uh, one of them is Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield. Former Cleveland Browns quarterback. The other is Derek Carr. Yeah, I mean. They're, they're... Send in the car. <laughs> Send yeah. in the car. Yeah. Derek Carr. Oh, I mean. The... He only passed for 200 yards. Okay, that's, that's, that is very surprising. Cause they needed nothing from Derek... him beyond about two minutes into the game. Derek Carr looked like. He was absolutely dominating, which, to be fair, he did, completing 19 of 23. He was, he was perfect, and Carolina is – Oh, my Carolina, goodness gracious. Jason, you had you had the privilege slash uh, court-assigned uh, punishment <laughs> yes. of watching the Carolina snaps. And Yeah, I'm going to be putting out a, a really helpful tweet uh, later. Be, be sure to check is it, it gonna, out. Is it going to be real, a lot of uh, proactive – a lot of proactive. Now, do you use. want people to eat before they go to your Twitter? I want them to eat while watching this video. I'm going to post of Bryce Young. My my quarterbacks in the league of record uh, because of uh, hospital draft was Derek Car in a super flex. Was you, no, no, no. This is the listener league. Or, yes, I'm sorry. In the listener league, yeah, okay. Derek Carr on one side of that ball and Bryce Young on the other. So I, it was uh, it was a fun watch. Anthony Richardson only completed nine passes in the entire game. Yeah, but how now, many yards? Now – the passes he completed were outrageously amazing. <laughs> they were punts. 212 <laughs> yards on nine completions. So that's another storyline to talk about. But the, the headline here, very, very low passing totals. Um, fewer pass attempts per game in week one. That Caleb Williams game was the fewest passing yards by a first-round quarterback in week one in 24 years. And 
this is the final headline here. Week one NFL passing touchdowns. You go back to 2022, 51 in week one. 2021, 61. We had 33. We had half the touchdowns we had four years ago. So if you want to know why most of the puns you sent in were bad, just be comforted by the fact the other side of the team you played probably had some of those underwhelming performances and tight ends didn't yeah, help. Yeah, that, that fell to the tight end position. So whoever, you know, you're out there, you, uh, most of you probably drafted one of the top tight ends. You certainly drafted, I'm sure, one of the top 12 tight ends according to ADP. And you're saying, I made a mistake. No, you didn't. No, it, it, everyone made a mistake. I mean, literally the top 12, there was only one player who scored double-digit fantasy points, and he didn't even have a good game. Yeah. He just caught a touchdown. Woo! That would be – Kyle Pitts, Kyle baby. Kyle Pitts. You're welcome, Andy. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean – Golden so, ticket. Uh, all the people afraid of Andrews, and they're like, oh, no, I made a mistake. Uh, disappointed in McBride. Oh, no, Kincaid disappeared. I mean, some of these might come to fruition to be bad, but the nice thing is in week one, is your opponent sucked too. I mean, unless they played Isaiah Likely, which they didn't. That seems unlikely. Uh, yeah, you're fine. So hopefully we got a free pass. That was like the bingo middle square on tight ends for week one. I mean, yeah, you get the free pass, but those of us that spent up yeah, paid the price. In tears? Yeah. In fantasy points. Thanks again to our sponsor, Nissan, and the all-new reimagined Nissan Kicks, redesigned with a bold new look. The Nissan Kicks sports the latest tech, like a Bose Personal Plus sound system. Head over to NissanUSA.com to learn more. Bose Personal Plus sound system is an available feature. Bose is a registered trademark of the Bose Corporation. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, Jerry, Jerry, he's quite so, contrary. Dude, guys, he's so good at it. He's, he's so good at it. He's so old. He's, he's so good at being the general manager, really getting the most out of uh, his team versus the players, really balancing those things out. Uh, uh, all of this is to say Dak Prescott signed a four-year, $240 million extension Seemed like, you know, moments before games kicked off, highest paid player in NFL history, way to, you know, really. Yeah. You know, Jerry got that contract down to the most ever. You know, that <laughs> yeah. is that is negotiation 101. Try to get it down to the highest ever. My favorite part of both the CD and Dak Prescott deals were that basically it was reported once it was finally signed that what the player came and asked for from day one uh, so Dak wanted it to start with a six on, yeah. a, on, a, on an annual they got, basis. They got him down from 61 to 60. <laughs> yeah, so it's like if you had said yes immediately when the players came and kept things happy and given yourself time to do other maneuvers, you would have ended at the same place you ended. That's yeah, what's I mean, so silly. But Dak and CD are locked up, so it's good for Dynasty, good to know they're connected, and this game got out of control game script-wise yeah. really early, but – it was it was hot and heavy CD early on. They just didn't need to do anything beyond about the second quarter in this game against uh, Cleveland. Yeah, some of the – Had a special teams touchdown that put it out of reach as well. The, the questions about, well, how are the Cowboys going to run the ball? Uh, CD Lamb yeah. is apparently one – that's one of the answers. We're just going to keep giving him end arounds. Pat Fryermuth signed a four-year, $48 million deal. Oh, good for you, Pat. And uh, I don't think we mentioned it, but Noah Gray also signed an extension. A th uh, right, yeah, yeah. A three-year extension with Kansas City, which means in Dynasty you should pay attention to Noah Gray long-term mm -hmm. because his extension will take him two years beyond Kelsey's uh, presumed end of his career. So keep your eyes on that. Jordan Love – uh, the Friday night game, we have not got to talk about this, had the injury. Uh, Great game right down to the end. Last play of the game gets his knee wrecked. And this this is – this is uh, it's good news. How's Al that, doing over there? Yeah, Al, how, how are you? Al, the re resident uh, Packers fan, was shaking his head with misery. Yeah, I'm unwell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good news that it's – you know, uh, his left knee is just an MCL sprain. You know, when you saw it and you yeah. saw the, the close-up replay, you see the knee pop and you go, oh, no, is this going to be something where now he's done for the season? So the good news is he should be back in about three weeks or around then. 
Um, the bad news is, in the meantime, I don't know if you could trust the awesome – like, Jaden Reed is one of the most – drafted and unfortunate on your bench players this last week I know plenty of people myself included that yeah. had him on a bench and it was like oh no at least I know I could play him now and then it's this next week it's like ah can I so uh TBD there yeah he was he was great and they are supposedly deciding between Malik Willis and Glazer Sean, had Sean Clifford Glazer reported it's expected to be Malik Willis yeah, so, that's not that's not encouraging. I, I, I won't I won't be starting any Packer wide receiver. I, with Willis, Jaden Reed is the safest of them because they manufacture touches yep. for Jaden Reed. Yep, I, I would agree. That is that is true. And we saw Malik Willis try to help run an offense at the end of the season with Derrick Henry in Tennessee a couple of years ago, and it was bad. Um, and then he just barely joined the roster. It doesn't help that he wasn't playing and practicing with the Packers for for weeks on end they're going to play defense run the ball and then you can pray for the wide receivers for a few weeks puka nakua left sunday night football with a right knee injury same knee he injured in camp this is not good because now you're in a position where puka is going to need to take more time than he took then to put the team in the position to you know for the long haul i would... promise you i will be on top of the news with puka <laughs> that is a that is a genuine from the heart promise as of now we don't have more information other than knowing um you know in that game he 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 banged his knee a couple times he came in with the bursa sack issue that this is going to be a wide range of of outcomes he could miss a week he could miss eight weeks um it was a discouraging thing to see he came right back into the game and it was like okay you might be fine and then going into the half, he literally didn't walk into the locker room. He yeah. just had to take a cart, and he looked pretty dejected. But again, you can that can happen, and then you can recover faster. So we're going to be all over it, like Jason said. Let's talk about another knee, Jake Ferguson's knee. Um, MRI confirmed a sprained MCL. He could miss time depending on the severity and grade of the MCL injury. Yeah, it's... Again, like I said, the, the news on him is all over the place because um, there's another report. We do know it was the MCL. Yeah, well, the, another report saying it's a diagnosed with a bone bruise and a minor sprain of the MCL that he could actually still play this Sunday. I would expect, or at least I'll prepare. If I have Ferguson, you got to prepare that like he's not going to play. Matthew Betts, our injury expert, pointed out that even if he played, he'll be less than 100%. Yes. So, it's one of those situations. They are, um, I believe, at home in Dallas this next week. It might be time to pivot. Uh, They're playing the Saints. If you were a Ferguson manager, because this will be one of our questions that people right. ask, how ha hard in the paint are you going for Isaiah Likely right now? And let, let's throw another injury in there. David Njoku, high ankle right. sprain. He's going to miss time too. So if it's Njoku, if it's Ferguson – if you've been underwhelmed by your tight end, how hard in the paint are you going to go? Man, Isaiah Likely is extremely difficult to gauge. We broke him down last week, but the 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 too long didn't read if you missed that show was Mark Andrews was super bracketed. The entire defensive plan was Mark Andrews is not allowed to beat us. Like almost everything from Isaiah Likely was was short and then I mean he had the one huge play, right? The the touchdown run. And Isaiah Likely is a very athletic guy. But if he is really just capturing those types of targets Let's over, ask over the course of the season, like that's not that won't pay off huge uh, a huge return of if you're expecting anything like week one. If you let, let me put it this way, how do you project Isaiah likely to finish rest of season at the tight end position? Because that is the relevant question for that's the fair. fab spend. Yeah. To me, I think Isaiah likely will finish between Seven and ten. I think okay. he's going to be okay. It's like picking fair. up a, it's like picking up a slot wide receiver for this offense. Like his skill set, speed. A lot of people thought I was making excuses for Mark Andrews because I have him. Like I'm invested in him. I have him nowhere. I have no leagues. I have nine leagues. I've got no Mark Andrews. I've not. I didn't buy into Mark Andrews coming into the year. I just buy into the fact that this was the Steve Spagnola. Let's stop Mark Andrews situation. But I think likely is a relevant fantasy option. And I think that a question about whether you'd flex him or Zay Flowers becomes interesting on some games. Yeah, he reminds me a lot of – I mean, you think about Dallas Goddard. Dallas Goddard's used in the flats. He is the third target behind two you know, better targets on his team. If Dallas Goddard 
were out there, you'd be picking him up if you dealt with one of these injuries. So I, I would certainly I, – I agree with you, Andy. I think 7-10 to 10 at tight end, which isn't great, but is totally relevant and playable. And when you look at the available guys – on waivers or whoever you know really hit this last week like we said none of the big tight ends did but the other tight ends didn't either I mean you're not going to pick up you're probably not going to pick up Foster Moreau who was you know the tight end two or uh, Jawan Johnson splitting targets with Foster Moreau like well, we got it I thought I remember Foster getting banged up at some he, point. he did let me let me say this if you're thinking about Isaiah Likely in the fab do not be surprised if somebody really good at tight end, hits the waiver wire on waiver wire Wednesday because you are going to see the panic on some of these picks and you could spend big fab on likely or maybe get one of these panic drops at tight end cheaper. I think the only other, I mean, obviously we're going to have a waiver show tomorrow. Very, very important. Stay tuned. But Colby Parkinson, um, now with the – huh? Now with Who? the Puka Nakua injury, Who? and you lost oh, a whatever. target. He was... oh, what did he do yesterday? Uh, oh. he, he, he was okay. Uh, Colby Parkinson had five targets, four for 47. I mean, okay. that's, it's not not great, but it you know, but that's playable. Yeah, it's playable. No, I, they have a role for the tight end in Los Angeles. And your point about Nakua's injury, do you want to try – like if you had Ferguson, you could pick up Parkinson and play him in his place for two or three weeks and spend zero fab. Yeah. Or you can go spend 70, 80 fab. Because I'm telling you, likely it's gonna they're be going expensive. to pay yes. up for him. Yeah, and, and if you disagreed with all my takes, then go pay. It, yeah, I, like I don't have a problem if you want to call your shot on Isaiah Likely. I'm just not doing that. Jordan Addison left with a high ankle sprain. It is the I think opposite it was his other one, right? Ankle. Yeah. yeah so um, he missed two and a half weeks of camp with the other high ankle sprain. You would expect him to miss a little bit of time. I mean, a high ankle sprain is usually. Honestly, usually with a high ankle sprain, you either don't miss a week or you miss three. That's that's the, the those are the most common outcomes. Keenan Allen left with an undisclosed leg injury. Keenan Allen often does leave with undisclosed injuries. Had a heel injury already. Keep an eye on that. Roma Dunze could hit waivers by skittish managers, and that would be a pickup. Kenneth Walker left in the fourth quarter of a game. <laughs> Kenneth Walker looked so good it hurt. I was against him in my in our league of record, and I knew every time he touched the football, my week could be ending. That's how good he looked. Left with abdominal pain. Told reporters he was good after the game, but we will need to monitor practice reports. Yeah, I hope it was just to get get that man some Pepto. He got was a tummy ache. Unbelievable. He should have vomited like Pacheco and then got yeah, back just out get there. The demons out. <laughs> you can rally, Kenneth. Puke them demons. <laughs> All right, that was today's news and notes presented, as always, by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We will take a break. We will get right into the studs. All right, let's jump in and talk about some of the best performances of the week. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Uh, Baker, Baker, candlestick maker, 24 for 30, 289 and four. Led all quarterbacks in passer rating. He was cooking. Two touchdowns to Mike Evans, one to Godwin, one to McMillan. Does this mean you can play Daniel Jones next week? <laughs> because part of this was Baker, who looked great. Yes. But part of this is the oh, commander's yeah. defense is hashtag not good. They're going to It's be. just easy. It's an easier defense to attempt to play against. Can I can I jump in there real quick yeah. and say no? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah negative no four Jones. points for Daniel Jones. No, so was it negative four? Yes. Oh, he was so bad. No on Jones. However, Washington is going to be a delight when you see that you're – your skill players are up against them this year. Washington is going, and I'll get right into Jaden Daniels. He was 17 for 24, 184, two on the ground, 88 rushing yards. Yeah, this was a monster performance for fantasy. Mediocre in the passing game, but if your team's going to get scored on like this, are you kidding me? Jaden Daniels is going to have every opportunity to put up these kind of games or better every week because Washington is giving it up on the backside. Yeah, and, and, and if you watch the offense – um, the offense there Am I right? was you said it just a bunch of screens just like it was just like here drop back and throw the ball to the left throw the ball to the right or maybe dump it a few yards ahead of the line of scrimmage and then run and I'm shocked he didn't get to 100 rushing yards 
based on you know how the game was going and and you know what you saw in the first half. Jane Daniels obviously was one of our favorite targets. Uh, Andy, you're my guy. He's going to pay off in in fantasy. He Almost proved, thirty fantasy points with no passing touchdowns. He proved and three fumbles this week that. As a rookie, he's going to be fine for fantasy because of his legs. Yes, I am, however, very concerned about every other player on that team. Terry McLaurin? Yeah. Terry Brian Mc Robinson? Terry McLaurin played 81% of the snaps. He had four targets, two for 17. You know who I felt the most bad for other than, like, Puka? Was, was it Austin? <laughs> it was, was Austin Eckler destroyed? twice. <laughs> the two hardest hits or – Two of the three hardest yeah. hits I saw this entire week were both on Eckler. It was yeah. not fair to the man. Eckler had two attempts in the game. Yeah, and he got crushed on both of them. But he did have four catches Actually, for 52 yards. it was, it was in yards. the receiving game when he got crushed. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of the uh, wink-wink rookies, Anthony Richardson, let's, let's talk oh about it. Oh, my goodness. Because <laughs> he was, on some levels, absolutely league-breakingly incredible. Yeah. He completed nine passes. Of 19, so terrible accuracy. He Which missed, is what we talked about. He missed uh, Adonai Mitchell on a... Two of them. Right, yes. He missed him on two potential touchdowns. One of them was just so bad because it was just... He was running to the end zone and, I mean, it was it was a guaranteed touchdown. Yeah. Six or 56 for one on the ground, threw two touchdowns, nine I completions. You have to... I, I am extremely encouraged... Uh, by this not look the accuracy is poor but that's not why I drafted Anthony Richardson I did not sign up for someone who's going to complete 70 percent of his passes I want a guy who's going to run and it was fourth down like we have to get in the end zone and he took on the defense and he won yeah the defense was ready and they came and they smashed right into Anthony Richardson before the goal that line is, but and then Anthony Richardson goes I'm stronger than you but, but it's not just that it's the way that the offense ran. Like, you had the incredible throw for the huge touchdown to Alec Pierce, which if you, you haven't seen the highlight, go watch. Second best throw of the weekend. It, it was incredible. And, yes, he missed Adonai Mitchell on uh, two of those. But they're going yeah. down the field. You're like, taking if those you're, shots. If you're going to be a mobile quarterback that is going to take these 20-plus air yard throws, yeah, I, complete 40% of your if passes. If we get to see more of that, I'm happy to take an L on him performing. It's going to be tough. We have not seen a quarterback with this kind of completion percentage ever finish inside the top 12. But if there's one to do it. Now, him crushing guys with his shoulder, that wasn't as encouraging to me as it was to you because that's how he hurt himself twice last year. If you do that every week, you are that is a risk factor yes, for Richardson. Absolutely. So You're putting was, yourself at risk. It was an imp impressive performance. They almost won the ball game. I'm not trying to take anything away. I just didn't know how to diagnose nine completions when all the completions were amazing. Yeah. But then the short misses were ugly. Every, I mean, he's my league of record quarterback. And every single time he dropped back to pass, I was just praying he didn't throw that ball. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. It was awesome. No, nobody's though. open. Was, just run. The throw to Pierce was amazing. He completed another bomb to him uh, it, later. It, it, it is. His arm is majestic it was he I don't think his base was even fully planted he slipped on the play and then right. quickly tried to readjust and then shot it out like a punt I mean that ball it could have hit the the you saying if he didn't slip he would have overthrown him by 20 yards maybe maybe, maybe that's maybe. the goal is you got to tell him like stop using your legs don't um, put your all legs arm. in <laughs> all arm. Lamar was great in week one. Josh yeah. Allen got it done in week one. Two rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns against Arizona's defense. Um, did bang up his left hand. Should be okay. I will say he did not look great. And this offense did not look great. Andy, good call on the almost upset. The Cardinals were right about to tie the game Ugh, on the last. So close. Play. Hey, well, that's what you called an almost <laughs> upset. Um, but the... It it took a while to get going. I was very disappointed with their offense, and it was against it was against a bad defense. Like the Cardinals' defense is bad, so I'm I'm uh, a little bit worried. We'll see how they fare against uh, Miami this next week. But yeah, that'll be an interesting I'll, test. Miami's a much better defense. I mean, obviously, still a great do you fantasy care about, performance. Do you care about Carr or Baker moving forward in terms of the – Baker, I do. For streaming or for, like, would you sub him in for somebody that underperformed this week that you thought was a starter? Like, best example would be Tua. Tua had a tough week. Would you be pivoting or just moving forward with 
I, no, I, who you draft. I think I'd be willing to hold on to it. Just Baker, uh, he's not going to be that good every single week, but it the fact that the the offense didn't completely crumble after the shift of offensive coordinator – it's encouraging. And also, they improved their weapons. You know, Godwin looked really good in he week did. one. You you add uh, McMillan. McMillan there. He looked uh, good, caught a touchdown in the game, and, and uh, Bucky Irving adds he looks a little bit to the offense. So, uh, yeah, I think Baker's very interesting is, is a good pickup, I believe. I'm not, you know, I'm hopeful for Derek Carr since I've got a lot of Olave, who ironically had a terrible week. Yeah. Um, but, no, I'm not playing him. And, and Carr's at Dallas. I talked about the – schedule for the Saints how they get to open against the Panthers great and they looked great but now it's tough sledding for four weeks we saw Saquon on Thursday or uh I guess it was Friday night it was amazing mm -hmm. he got everything chunk plays all the time eight carries inside the red zone the most in the NFL so for Saquon and Joe Mixon Two Mixon players that moved teams super, super good. as veteran stars. Mixon was 30 for 159 and one. A tight his career high in attempts. And he looked great on every one of them. We tweeted out um, every carry today. Four carries inside the 10, 92% of touches. Everything they wanted when, they, when we were like, well, Singletary was pretty good for the offense. Well, this was an offense that was 3.5 a carry last year on average. And they come out in week one and they literally – put in place a perfect offensive scheme with Joe Mixon. 30 for 159 and one. He looks like a workhorse. And he, the, he's one guy that doesn't generally get hurt. Yeah, the utilization of Saquon and Joe Mixon mixed with how, how good they looked, and they're on great offenses. Genuinely, like if you were redoing the draft right now, the, those two guys would be right after Bijan and and Brees. I mean, it would it, they would be – middle of the first round over a lot of those wide receivers. It was a good day for Alvin Kamara in a blowout, 15 for 83 and one, five targets. Uh, so that was nice to see. Ramondre Stevenson, workhorse, 25 he, for 120 He really one. was. He was at a running back attempt share that uh, – let me just double check it. So he hit it – no, he didn't even get there. He was at 78% of the running back attempts. He never hit that one time last year. And he was number one. In yards after contact, it was the recipe that this team wanted to put into place when they paid Ramondre, when they drafted a rookie quarterback, when they brought in Jacoby Brissett, and it worked flawlessly. Play defense, run the football. If they're in a negative game script, we're not going to see 78% for Ramondre Stevenson, but right now he looks like he, a great he selection. Does, I would say this is a team where uh, like, where Joe Mixon, I already, like that feels like I'm I'm wrong. I was wrong about Joe Mixon because he looked so good for hey, Ramondre. You were right. I remember you telling me what a great football player that's, he that's was. That's true. I did change my opinion at the last second. For Ramondre, I want to see him play not the Cincinnati Bengals because that team was an absolute dumpster fire. What about Seattle? You yeah, want to see him play Seattle? Say, yeah. Seattle. He gets Seattle next week, but then it's the Jets and the San Francisco 49ers. That, all yeah, I'm saying yeah. is like I'm not rushing out to immediately try and trade for Ramondre. He's going to have some nausea games because of the fact that this offense could get behind or, you know, and still be relentless with the run. But if he doesn't get into the end zone on a handful of games this year, you'll probably be disappointed. But he looked good, and yeah. that was the important thing. Yeah, I think, I think to Mike's point is, and it goes with the yards after contact, like he led all in yards after contact. Part of that's good, part of that's bad. He, you know, he's getting contacted early, but right. but the Bengals did not have the defense to take him down because he's strong. If you play a good defense, you're going to get contacted early and taken down early. A 13% target share is very nice. J.K. Dobbins, 10 for 135 and 1. <laughs> the, the best, worst performance <laughs> of the week. Have you ever seen a better bad performance? I mean, I don't know. We're, we're talking about the fact that he – it was a great – it was a great day for yes. J.K. Dobbins. But he had a 46 and 61 yard run, and on both of them, he could have most <laughs> most players would have scored, but the one <laughs> leg was all he had going after about 20 it yards. Was, it was so funny on the second one when he's running and he's ahead. I mean, he's just he's he's beat the defense, and so he should be running to the end zone. And he gets you know whatever it was, how, however long that 61 and 46. So about 58 yards. <laughs> Down the field, he just he he wraps up the yep. the football with both hands. <laughs> he's still like you know fifteen yards from the end zone, and just because he knows he's like out of gas. He it's just, like the end of the Daniel Jones run from years ago. Yeah. 
He was three and a half a carry on his other eight carries, but those two big plays were amazing. The team did everything they wanted to do. I do think that the Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins split, you'll still see that, and that means that there's a possibility Gus has a better game at some point. If this continues for two or three games, I think you'll see a little bit more distribution to the J.K. Dobbins side. Dobbins will certainly be one of the biggest uh, waiver wire pickups of the week. Well, uh, Devon A. Chan, 10 for 24 on the ground, but had a rushing touchdown, seven targets for seven receptions and 76 yards. So split time with Raheem Mostert. Mostert had kind of a dud of a game. He did, and he looked like he got he got banked up too. Uh, a. Chan was amazing in the receiving game. So there was a video of him kind of getting banged up at the very end of the game. Hopefully he's okay. Kenneth or Jason won't be okay. I just can't. Not uh, too many injuries to my it's guys. It's the right. one scary thing about H N. Yeah. Man, they he just he's a little guy that runs really fast. He gets hit really hard. At I least, hope he's okay. At least what we saw is what we hoped for. He was, you know, he was their their primary dude. I know he's splitting time. He's always going to split time. But being involved in the passing game that much, that much slot work. Se I mean, seven for seventy six is good for a wide receiver. And then you add the ability to have rushing touchdowns. And that was a goal line rushing touchdown. They didn't take him out and put Moster in when they got down to the two and the one. Ken Walker was 20 for 103 and one. I, you know, he didn't get going until the second half. The game script was conducive for him towards the end of the game. We'll pay attention to the abdominal injury, but he looked electric. Uh, he looked a lot better than the passing game did. Let's put it that way. The passing game looked troubled on a lot of fronts. And we've got, we got people to talk about there soon. Other good performances on the ground, and I'll go through them quick. You can pick one out and talk about them as you want. Connor, 16 for 50 and one. He also had three catches. Aaron Jones, 14 for 94 against the Giants, had a touchdown. Pollard got into the end zone. Um, to me, he is, you know, my take on him was that he's just so much better than Tajay Spears. That was my, mine too. In my opinion, 16 for 82 and a touchdown against a good Chicago defense to me was impressive. 5.1 a carry. Brian Robinson got into the end zone. He also caught four, uh, three passes for 49 yards. Uh, I liked what I saw from him in a game where they struggled on offense. Jerome Ford was good on a bad situation. David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs both scored. Um, a few. And Gibbs caught passes. They were basically – there were two drives in the game where I saw a swap because I watched this game very closely with Gibbs on my roster. Jason has Montgomery. I saw two game, two drives where they had a swap mid-drive. Otherwise, they were pretty much going, this is a Monty drive, this is a Gibbs drive. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, they Gibbs got a couple back-to-back -back in the fourth quarter, which I thought was interesting. But then in overtime, they decided Beef Boys were going to get up there, hit you in the face, and let Montgomery run through you. I mean, David Montgomery won that game. He was unbelievable in overtime, and maybe that was partly because his legs were fresh from – Gibbs having a lot of the fourth quarter. I mean, it's it's just good football. I I obviously Gibbs is going to be far 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 more safe because of his work in the passing game. Only one target for David Montgomery through a full game and overtime. Uh, Montgomery should be fine most weeks. Should be used and he's team is successful. They had the highest Montgomery had the highest rush success rate of any running back in week one, but he doesn't get used in the passing game, and that's that's just bad for fantasy. The Going back to Tony Pollard, because I think that is one of the biggest we, – we were talking about what we're watching what matters. going into week one and what matters. Every word, all off season, out of the coaching staff's mouth is that this is a 1A, 1B situation, a 50-50 timeshare. It was not. You're talking about Tony Pollard had 16 carries. Tajay had four. Tony Pollard's the starter. You know, Pay attention to that. Spears wasn't bad on his four touches, but he didn't get a lot of touches. Uh, at wide receiver, studs, Jaden Reed. Six targets, four for 138 and a touchdown, had a rushing touchdown. He's very good. At he had another touchdown as well in that game. Called back. That yeah. was called back, but it was all, it, it was 12 men on the field. Yeah, and, for on both, both sides. For both sides, so it was an irrelevant thing. It was a, that's, that's equal. Just let him play it out. I know. It, I mean, both players had no effect on the play, and Reed broke tackles. Reed just looked so good, man. So 21 does, targets? So does yeah. Cooper Cup. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Fantasy MVP. Oh, man. 
Uh, Cooper Cup, 21 targets, 14 for one, 10 and one. He was in motion. Oh, I watched this thing, man. He was in motion before every play, and it was like you just couldn't guard him. It was impossible. Also scored. Cooper Cup, we told you he was going to be a steal. He's going to be an accidentally even better steal with no Puka Nakua. He's going to perish, though. If you, if, oh, you, I, if you give him 21 targets a game, his body will he's disintegrate. Fine. He's fine. They're little bitty baby targets. Even just the motion, man. I'm that guy's got to be on an IV right now. But I would say just to get tackled that many times in a game. Cup was in motion that's wild. at the snap on 30 plays, which is six more than any other player in a game over the last seven years. Uh, shout out to Cooper Cup. Yeah. He also sent us some coffee. Oh, he thank did. you, Cooper. Yeah. So, uh, sent Jason. Stay some healthy, man. Yes. Tyreek Hill, 12 targets, seven for 130 and one. Just missed another bomb touchdown. He is Im he's impossible to defend, and he will probably score a long touchdown every game. That's how it feels. All right, let's talk about this one because this one has implications moving forward. Jameson Williams! Kyle, eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Eat it. All right. Um, Jameson Williams, nine targets, five for 121 and a touchdown. Had a rush. I'm saying that all very loudly and directed at Kyle because I know there's a chance I won't get to say it next <laughs> week. But the here's what was really, really obvious in the game to me, and you guys watched it in its uh, entirety as mm -hmm. well. What was obvious is that they didn't have receiving weapons that were – Josh Reynolds wasn't popping in and out of the lineup. There wasn't Cleef Raymond receptions. This was really, you line up and it's Laporta, it's Amon Ra, and it's Jameson Williams. So moving forward, were you super encouraged? Were you just kind of like, this is an outlier? How did you take the JMO debut? Because he scored a lot of fantasy points. Nine targets. So he's he's a talented player on a per touch, once the ball is in his hands type of situation. The question is, can he get the ball in his hands enough? Nine targets is great. Um, so I'm very encouraged. However, you had you had him out target Amon Ross St. Brown. I, I would almost take the bet that that won't happen again this season. So I do think this is a bit of an outlier. I need to see a little bit of games put together in a row where um, would you trade him? I would, would trade, you try high, to on trade high on Jameson Williams. Yes, I would. I I don't think I would. Tampa, Arizona, Seattle are the next three matchups for them if Jamison Williams was a seventh round pick that had a breakout game it would be different to me than what Jace, I, Jason Jason and I were like in love with this guy coming out of college mm -hmm. and it feels like the Lions if he did what needed to be done this offseason and they commit to him you just picked up a Harrison Chase neighbors type of talent Waddle like Waddle right. he's the most similar to Waddle to me because crossing routes for Jamison Williams somehow turn into big, big gains because he's just faster than you. I would not Jason, are you yeah. wavering now? I am wavering because the, the truth is, oh, I just man, I remember how much I loved him coming out. And this is a great offense. It's just, do you believe? It's just a great offense. So do you want a piece? Do you want the wide receiver two of a great offense? Yes. I'm, I'm scarred by how little he's done for how much he's been on the field in the past. But yeah, I mean, I, I guess you – these are the type of players that when you hit on, they they change things for fantasy. So I, I guess I would hold on to them. Mike Evans, two more touchdowns. Working on that first ballot. Yeah, he is. Every time he scores, I'm in on the first ballot thing. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. When he doesn't score, Jason, I'm with you. Not on the first ballot. Still a Hall of Famer. Second ballot. Obviously. Eight for 83 and a touchdown for Godwin. Uh, it was a really nice thing to see. Plays Detroit next week. A.J. Brown looked great. Five for 119 on Friday night. Alec Pierce, three for 125 and a touchdown. I think you're going to see big plays bounce around between Doolin, Pierce, and Mitchell. And so all three of those guys, you could be playing the, uh, you know, put the wrong, play the wrong hand every week. Is yeah. that your interpretation uh, one, of it? 100%. It me, yeah. It's going to be, you know, if I'm playing DFS, that's fine. Take a cheap uh, shot. But if you're putting these guys in your lineup, that is so hard to say. A guy who completed nine passes, I want to slice that up and have the majority going to Pittman. So. Worthy had the great debut with two touchdowns. Stephon Diggs, start of the week, and I'm going to say it right now, trade the heck out of Stephon Diggs. Okay, I wondered where people were going to land Stephon on that. Stephon Diggs scored two times. He will be a red zone factor. His air yards, the, it was nine on the day. I, I heard it was nine. Yeah, his air yards on a, averaged out per throw was like one and a half. He 
Caught two touchdowns. Compared to the other two guys, which was double digits. Bo- both Nico and Tank Dell had over 100 air yards each. So, to me, this was it, it made sense in this offense, this situation, to play digs. You got the two touchdowns. You got the start. I would try to see if you can find somebody that believes in the name of Stephon Diggs combined with this performance and just says, oh, my gosh. Like, Diggs is going to – they're going to have good games with Stephon Diggs. But around the end zone, you're going to see Nico. You're going to see Tank Dell. You're going to see Joe Mixon. So you're going to have some – like, you want bigger plays from Diggs. He was 6 for 33. Yeah, if you can, if you can trade him for someone who believes in him as a one, as like a, a fantasy one, then get that haul. Rashid Shahid, three for 73 and a touchdown. Oh, by the way, Nico was amazing. Nico, Nico is, was amazing. Nico is that dude. In the game, the breakdown, so you know for week one, 64 snaps for Diggs, or sorry, for Nico, 62 for Diggs, 51 for Tank. They ran 33, 35, and 34 routes. The targets were 8, 6, and 8, and Tank had two carries. So this was, you know, there wasn't one person that was – squeezed out which was nice to see they ran three wide all the time yeah i mean if you look at the routes there's no there's no difference in routes run which is the only thing that matters for wide receivers it doesn't matter if you're on the field not running a route Uh, so the routes were even and there were two in zone targets to tank dell that just didn't didn't connect you will not get all three of these guys every week no most weeks you this week tank dell was the one that hurt for fantasy but it's going to rotate shaheed three for 73 and a touchdown it was Carolina. The game was out of hand. It was a big play like Shahid is always good for. But I I will tell you this from the beginning of last year when I had Olave on my roster and I was watching the Saints each and every week and I wanted Olave to have big plays. Derek Carr and Rashid Shahid are like – these are like friends. These are like – they probably have breakfast. They might go out to movies, right? Like they might they, – they are buddies. And Derek Carr is going to take his shots. And I don't know what to make out of it. Because it's not like he had a billion targets, but they also didn't need to throw in the second half. So, are you in on Shahid, Mike? I, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Jason, you can or or Jason. For I'm fine. Like if you're looking at who do I put in my flex here that I know can go off, but for regular any type of consistency, I would still be out. I, I am I am in on Rashid. For and the that's first from time an Olave ever. manager. Yeah, it's probably because I'm an yeah. Olave manager. Likely had the big game at tight end. Kyle Pitts got into the end zone, three for 26 and a touchdown is a horrible line, but it's an amazing line <laughs> because it was the best of any drafted tight end. He also played every down and he participated on all routes on all passing opportunities, which is awesome. Like him and Bijan are actually takeaways from week one yes. that are really relevant because they had so much work and they the snaps – Arthur Smith is not there no more, and you felt it in the snaps. You didn't feel it in the fantasy production. So we'll talk about Drake London later, but those two guys, I think... Yeah, the behind-the-scenes utilization is perfection. It is what you dream of for fantasy. It didn't come through... I mean, Pitts got the touchdown, which was great, but he also had like a little crosser that I just don't remember ever seeing Arthur Smith use. it. That was Jonu Smith's role. It's like some of the layups. you got to get the, the ball in the hands of your athletes easily, not just like, you know gunslinging it downfield so it was, it was great to see even though it was it's so funny because it's a bad stat line but he's in the studs because he was pretty much the best tight end that was played this week that was drafted yeah, yeah. the only other takeaway uh because it, it was a it was a great debut for brock bowers yes. it uh, was six for 58 um you're not gonna you can't stop him so if the if the team has uh, any brain cells at all you will target brock bowers all the time and it was a great great debut this was uh only two rookies since 2014, have had eight-plus targets in the first game. If I was going – here, here's here's the hot take. If I'm going out to spin fab and Bowers didn't get drafted, oh, if he didn't oh, get drafted, yeah, that's an easy I'm, I'm spending agree. way more on Bowers than likely, though. That's the take oh, I'm, way yeah, that I'm giving you is that Bowers is the better player. Yeah, I agree. I agree. If 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 Bowers were in our league of record because I, I have lost Najoku and I'm going to have to find one. If Bowers was on waivers, I would, I would drop 80. You want pits? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break and then come uh, come back with us and commiserate on some of these duds. All right, let's jump in. Pooped in his big boy pants. There was uh there was plenty 
to go around this week because we talked about it. The, the performances, they, the passing yardage, touchdowns, they weren't there. That meant disappointing fantasy performances. Some were excusable. Some were concerning. So Dak, excusable. Yeah. Didn't need to throw. Punt he, return yeah, touchdown. Game script. He came out, was cooking, looking great, and then they just easily coasted to a victory. Concerning. Joe Burrow, 21 for 29, lost against New England. At home. At home. Had Jamar Chase back on the field. And, and Chase played essentially the whole game. So, and he was only pressured on six dropbacks. Do you want to know what it what? looked like? It looked like this team desperately missed Joe Mixon. They did not have a threat in that the is... run game. They did not have a balanced looking offense that allowed Burrow to sit there and pick them apart. And I think it's going to be a real problem. I'm, I'm concerned. The fact that they go from at home against New England, who was basically one of the two worst teams by Vegas coming in, to now they go on the road in Kansas City, they don't seem prepared for this. And the vibes have just been so bad in Cincinnati the last like month. T. Higgins is You're not injured. paying your players. He's playing without a contract. Jamar Chase is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if Higgins. you don't have a contract, guess what? That hangnail suddenly keeps you out of a game. Yeah, I'm I'm a little worried. You protect worried. yourself. I'm a little worried. Because you need money. It's stupid. They're but, stupid, stupid, dumb. <laughs> but And they I, were dumb to lose Mixon and not replace him with somebody that was a threat. I for will. a team that competes for a Super Bowl. Yeah. I, I would have to go back and rewatch it because Moss was not inefficient. No, Moss was Moss, Moss was nine for forty four on the ground. He caught two passes for seventeen yards. And Moss they only had twelve rush attempts as a team. Yeah, Moss is a takeaway that he he is their main lead guy, like you know, some of us thought he would be. He got the touchdown. He looked fine, but it's still different when you you have now an identity of you know, there's there's a big difference between Joe Mixon and, and that. that. That's why they didn't run the ball much. Goff and Lawrence were disappointments because were. the, the over-unders of these games, the expectations of these games, Goff and Lawrence did not perform um, up to expectation. Amon Ra's disappearance was a big part of why Goff had the game he had. The, I feel like the Goff one was – that was baffling. Like Trevor Lawrence – you're hoping that if he's in a game against Miami and we're going to get a bunch of points around here that he's going to have a better game. That's that's fine. But Jared Goff was, I mean, this was brutal. It was, if the, the first half was the highest T first half of just guys saying like, well, no, we're only going to run the ball. No, we're only going to run mm -hmm. the ball. We're, you, we're going to end up running the ball more than you. I dare you to run the ball. And I mean, he ends up, at, by the end, throwing the ball 28 times, but it was that was not the game script I thought we were going to get. I, from a film standpoint, obviously very disappointed um, with the fantasy output in both Golf and Lawrence. From a film standpoint, I, I have no concerns. Lawrence actually had some really impressive plays to me. Um, so Golf and Lawrence, so they, I think that I still have the expectation I had prior to this week on them. Kirk Cousins. Uh, this one is. This uh, was a tough situation for yeah. him. Pittsburgh's defense and J, uh, I almost said JJ, TJ Watt were unrelenting, and Cousins was coming back from an injury that made him nearly immobile, and this combo did not work. Hayden Winks uh, tweeted out a, a a play, a single play that I've never seen something like it. It was like, you know, Kirk Cousins was in the pocket, and he doesn't plant on his throwing leg which is the Achilles leg, and then throws this ball basically into the dirt because he didn't have power from his right. throwing leg. He, they I, didn't run play action. Right, because there's – Because Kirk cannot move, and I – it different leg, again, for the, the, the big science experiment we get to watch of Kirk Cousins' recovery, Aaron Rodgers' recovery, but my first thought after watching Kirk was, uh-oh. <laughs> That'd well, and, and you know he's going to be tentative, and then when you know T.J. Watt's bearing down, maybe you're even more tentative. Maybe. I we we need to see more. Yes. But if this is what you're going to get, you're going to have a problem in Atlanta. I, I had questions on this game be, because part of me is scared of Kirk Cousins' health and ability in this. And then part of me is just like, oh, my gosh, that Steelers defense was unbelievable. What was unbelievable? That was one of the best defensive performances I've ever seen. He was just – he was he was on Kirk Cousins' back all night long. So <laughs> – you know, 
<laughs> oh, oh, night. <laughs> I don't think Cousins really enjoyed that. No. No, no. it was a bad night. Yeah. He was um, not dancing in the street. All right. There were some concerning performances at running back, and I think some that are um, – they're going to have longer effects than just one week. We say don't panic, but you're supposed to react appropriately. Javante was 8 for 23. Oh, yeah. I'm out. Yeah. This, he that's, looked, that's red alert. This is he five looked, red alerts. Oh, you want me to hit it? Yes. yes. Two targets, two targets, and you're the you have thirty six snaps. Three you, three way timeshare too, and and this was against a bad defense. Um, not good. He didn't look like he was the two years ago version. You know, this was the this was the question. Either he's back and he's healthy, yep. or if he's not the healthy two years ago version of Javante Williams, then he's in a committee for a bad offense. It's, I'm out. It's trouble. I mean, not yeah. I, I I don't have any shares of him this year because I was already out. But like, it was just. It was confirmation bias or or co no. What am I looking for? It was yeah, yeah. that works. Yeah, it works. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> no, yeah that's, you did that's it. it. Thank you. Got you. There. I got there. <laughs> this is look. If I have Javante and I have anybody else as an option, I'm putting Javante on my bench. And you have Javante. So who's I'm, your bench option? You're playing ahead of him. J.K. Dobbins. Yeah, I'm glad you. You should be glad you drafted uh, J.K. Dobbins. We, we are very glad. But I'm saying because Javante was like, just kidding. Even I'm if, not back. Even if you have what feels like a really gross option, I'm just playing Javante right now. He does he he looks bad. This isn't a oh man, things didn't go the right way. No, he looks bad. He's got a rookie quarterback who also looked bad. Yes. Uh, Bo Nix had the lowest A dot, I think, that we've seen in quite some time. It was something like three. So uh which Bo Nix can do well, but most guys can do that well. Uh, but Bo Nix had more yards than Caleb Williams. Bo, Bo Nix looked really good sometimes and really bad sometimes. Anything downfield that it, the two times he tried to threaten on downfield balls were horrible decisions. Triple coverage on both, picks for both. Um, he was two for 12. Two for 12 on any throw over 10 yards. That was yeah. from Greg Rosenthal. It's not going to get it done. Um, 42 total yards and two picks. DeAndre Swift, this was not good. 10 for 30 Dude. on 70% of snaps. That seems impossible to do and didn't get past the football. So the Bears were a mirage win this week on offense. This was a defensive performance. This was a meltdown by Will Levis. This was the special teams making a play. We need to see so much more from Caleb Williams and company to have any confidence in their pa yeah, the in their, in the their fantasy players. Chicago offense was putrid. I mean, arguably the worst of the week. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's that's a fair. It's funny. Shout that out they, Daniel Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bryce I mean, Young, what's up? So arguably third worst. Arguably league. third worst. I, I'm, I want to go back and just try and figure out what happened to piece the the puzzle together because we're watching early, mm -hmm. early in the game. DeAndre Swift <clears throat> gets a touch and you're like, he looks fast. He's fast. He, I mean, and that's what Swift is as advertises is fast. Probably not a very good running back, at least in my opinion. And we're like, man. But Swift, if if there's if there's a hole, he'll get there and he'll get you some yards. And then we get to like halfway through the game, like Jason, Swift's like five carries for six yards. What what happened? Nothing worked on offense for that team. Nothing did. Well, um, I mean, they were playing against Tennessee. <laughs> well, maybe maybe that'll yeah. be true in the yeah, end. Maybe. Well, we're gathering that strength of schedule data, and it's going to need a few more weeks. Raheem Mostert, pure dud of a game, as bad as yeah, it gets. I it's concerning. I thought both players would be good this week, A-Chan and Mostert. They were both starts of the week. One was a start, one was a huge fart. The, well, yeah. And one. neither ran the ball well, though. Like the, yeah, yes. the yardage yeah. on the ground was bad, and the there are Mostert games like this. 44% of snaps. I'm not out on Mostert permanently. Next week against Buffalo, we want to see more. This is a watch-the-injury-report situation. There was, there was a play where Mostert looked like he hurt his shoulder, yep. played very few snaps from that point on. Um so he, I, I think that is actually part of why you saw a lot of Jeff Wilson towards the end of the game. I think that Jalen most, Wright was inactive. Right. So wrong. Correct. Right. Amen. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll pay attention to this, but I think it was more injury and and snaps than than just bad performance. All right, Chuba was not good. <laughs> Six for fourteen. No. Uh, this offense is bad enough for you to be scared. 
Zamir White was not good. 13 for 44, and the worst part was he only played 38% of snaps. Yeah, both of these players. You you had you had um, Miles Sanders with five carries. So it was, a, it was a split with Chuba. And then with Zamir, what happened was there was I think this was a hot hand situation. Zamir started right. as the starter. You watched him get everything at the very beginning of this game, and he did jack squat with it. It was like killing drives. And then all of a sudden, you have Alexander Madison – get the, his hands on the ball. Cool, hurt, man. <laughs> hurdle a guy, run for a 31-yard touchdown, and then they were like, okay, he's the hot hand. We're giving him the ball the rest of the way. And so this is, I mean. And they blew this game because Antonio Pierce was a, was a, oh, what a, what a coward. I mean, Fourth and one in, I don't even know in if you positive was, position with little time left and you need a touchdown? I what apologize. was it, four minutes left? Something like that. Uh, Four it, minutes because they never got the ball back. I, I, it was egregiously cowardice. I actually want to reel that back because I don't think it was being. Oh, I, I, don't. I, I, will, I don't. I think it was. I don't think it was cowardice. Seven fifteen in the fourth. I don't think it was cowardice. I think it was idiocy. I think it was just pure bad. It's Seven fifteen in the making. fourth seems like you should be able. You're to You're on it. their side of the field. You need a yard. You're. If they kick a field goal, it's a two-score game. You cannot punt that ball. It's you need one yard. I agree. You can't one call yard. Him, I agree. Uh, Coward isn't fair. It's a dumb dumb. You're a dummy. So that my, was dumb dumb my, dumb dumb dummy. My zoomed out look at Zamir is it it what it could be hot hand. I need some more data here, but it's the Madison ran 24 routes. Zamir ran 10. Like that was. Pretty much my entire concern with, with Zamir White is that, that Madison will be the receiving he back. He was only 3.38 a carry, too. I yeah. mean, he didn't do enough, and they play Baltimore next week. So you may need to save him through to Carolina and see what happens and there. He, he was not – or like Chuba got game scripted out because the Saints just blew out the You know who's in Panthers. trouble? Chuba and Devin Singletary. Singletary is in trouble because that offense is in trouble. You cannot – it just brings back memories – of when Cleveland said they wanted to run the ball with Isaiah Crowell, yeah. and then you came out and your defense was so abysmal that you don't get to do what you want to do. I disagree. Um, now I, I agree with what your take is on you can't always run the ball a lot if you're down, and they're always going to be down. But he got five targets, and he played 70% of the snaps. So you're okay with – you think Singletary versus Chuba oh, is a safer situation? One billion percent. Chuba's in a split – uh, Devin Singletary's usage behind the scenes were great. And one of the storylines that is, you know, you, you go away from week one and you try to make your, you know, we're talking about the Falcons. Like, is Kirk going to be a problem or was it the Steelers defense? The Minnesota defense, you know, versus the, the, the Giants offense, this is one to watch. Like, the Giants offense looked beyond putrid. But also, may, maybe part of that needs to go to Minnesota, whose defense really looked good. Their defense got clicking last year with Flores. And so this was tough sledding for Singletary. They go up against Washington this week. I'll bet Singletary has a great game. Okay. All right. That's a uh, good perspective. And you're probably – I think I agree with you on the fact that Singletary's bad game was, uh, you know, the, the snap counts not being in the committee gives him some hope in better matchups. At wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown, three for 13. We've already talked ah. about it. This was just weird. And we know how good a player Amon Ra is. Yeah. You just move forward. Jamar Chase, six for sixty two. They played so poorly and now you gotta go to Arrowhead. Now you don't have Sneed. So Jamar Chase, you're gonna play him. But it was not encouraging to see how Burrow played. Olave. Let's talk about it. Uh oh, Lave. Yeah, yeah. Chris uh oh Lave. <clears throat> um <laughs> 47 points. 47 points scored. That's that's part are of you, the Are you cr kind of choking <laughs> up a little, a little, a little bit? choked up. Um, part of it is that he was completely unneeded, right? It, similarly to what we saw with um, the Dak having a, a bad game. The the early touchdowns didn't go to Olave, and Derek Carr didn't need to throw the ball much, didn't throw the ball much, right? Not 200 passing yards because this team won. They just blew the doors off of a hapless uh, Panthers team. There's so, no doors. There's no walls. There's no, there's nothing. There's, there's, there's no, no foundation. The cement, no, the cement slab is gone. Really? Just dirt. There is Pure nothing dirt. left. Earth. I didn't know you could take the foundation and disrupt they it. Jack they jacked it up. Yeah, when it's forty-seven. I thought the setting a good foundation was the whole point. Forty-seven to ten is there is the, the twister hit. That you is, don't even know there's a house there. That is the whole point. The problem is they never set a good foundation. Oh, sand. Yeah, Bryce they, Young yeah. is the sand. <laughs> they traded away a hall for sand. Yeah. The Sandman. 
The Sandman. Oh, Bryce Hall is the Sandman. For sure he is. He's uh, the Sand Foundation. Do your work, Al. Sandman should be uh, easy enough to figure out. Um, So you're not worried about Alave? Um, boom, 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 boom. I'm not. It's not a good start. It's not a good start. I'm not <clears throat> super worried about Alave. Now, he Two plays target against, sucks. That uh, does suck. Um, But no one on this team had a bunch of targets. That's true. Uh, So I, I, you, you wash it away. But Dallas next weekend, Dallas is going to be very, very difficult. Uh, we get to talk about it now. And uh, if you check Jason, out, because you, you called him a bust, he was my bust pick. Yeah. I'm just saying, it, it, Marvin it, Harrison Jr. was one for four. He was the worst performing rookie wide out of the week. He had three targets. There is a very good tweet out draft by, one. Uh, Kyle Borgannoni that shows uh, the breakdown of his routes. The Cardinals' offense, I, they got up 17-3 to three against Buffalo. I don't know if they just decided to go hyper-conservative at that they point did. and try to protect a, pre, a presumed win or what. Well, the, the opening part of them getting the lead, too, was they, just, they were getting incredible catch and run out of the running back position. That, they did the, not target Marv, and they did not look to him early. I, I don't think they got conservative. I think they, they started are it. conservative. Yeah. Like, their offense looks kind of dumb. Like, they don't throw to their outside wide receivers. We saw this last year, and we thought, oh, it's a talent issue. They need better outside wide receivers. But the way Kyler's work in the field, it's like Dorch and, and Trey McBride. Trey McBride might have finished, you know, poorly, but he was still involved. He, his target share was good. It, it was, but it was also – It was shallow. I, I think there was at least – uh, Kyle, I don't. Maybe you remember at least two of the recept of Trey McBride's receptions were that fourth quarter. We're going down to to try and and take or tie whatever it was, and they were just checkdowns to McBride. I did not think that I uh, genuinely, and I'll say this right now, I did not think when you look at the grand scheme of the off season and projecting Marvin Harrison, I didn't think a game like this was possible for him. Right. That so I'll say that to start. I didn't think it was possible for your wide receiver one to play every snap to be out there, and to go one for four. I did not think that that was in the realm. I thought even if he wasn't as prolific as Malik Neighbors on the big games, that you would never get a game like one for four. We need So that is a reality check. We need Marv Sr. Oh, yeah. to come in here. Oh, he, is, he is. He will. Like the There was the clip of, like, oh, what's something that your son should do better? Like, My son needs to go tell the quarterback that he you need the ball. So uh, Mr. Jr., Mr. Harrison Jr., go tell Kyler that you need the ball. Listen hey, to your father. Be a good son. Drake London, <laughs> two for 15, 56 snaps, three targets. This is why Drake London was a risky pick is because this is what you've seen from Atlanta for all of the time Drake London has been a member of the offense. I mean, it's, it's Kirk. It's, I'm afraid of Kirk. That sentence after week one is – why Drake London was a risky pick in fantasy football because he's never done it, and if you're just afraid of every quarterback he has, well, we I mean we talked about co going into Week One about how this is, could look so like duh how good Drake London's going to be for yeah. fantasy, and it was all based around the fact of like if he's got a healthy Kirk Cousins, we're going to go out there and be like duh Drake London is the one for a great offense. So this is really Kirk Cousins' watch and. I think it's not red alert, red alert yet because this was a great, unbelievable defense from the Steelers. I they, want to see that Philly game next week. Exactly. Yeah. I, want to, I want to see him against another uh, week of confidence in the Achilles. Like That's another thing. This was his first game on yeah. that. He's, so week two, this week two is where I'll right. start. So don't panic on Drake, but be, yes. be careful because if, if Cousins isn't Cousins, there will be a problem. We already talked about Tank Dell. We can move forward. Amari Cooper. Nine targets, two for 16, had a brutal touchdown drop. He did. On a pass that Deshaun Watson chose to take a huge monster hit to get him. He was out there. Jerry Judy left with an injury. He had the touchdown. Brighter days ahead for Amari Cooper. We know that Najoku's week to week on injury. This was one that I think you just chalk up to Dallas defense and uh, a drop. Because yeah, if he scores a touchdown there, we're not even talking about yeah, it. Yeah, a, a little bit. But the so that I like nine targets. I do. I mean that one particular play that's Amari Cooper's fault. The rest of them though are like Deshaun Watson 
looks like a big problem. Ah, Just the, give the us way, Jameis. The way that Kirk, I'm concerned Jameis about. Jameis would be great. Oh, man, give be, us Jameis. The way I'm concerned about Kirk, yeah, I'm also concerned about Watson. Oh, I'm. That's, the trifecta. that's not fair. That's not fair. Well, well, one of them is injury related. One of them is yeah, but I'm, ju I'm just mental saying, injury related. Yeah, yeah Watson's been bad since forever. <laughs> DJ Moore, Roma, Dunze, Keenan Allen. We talked about those. Lots of targets, no catches, and we need more yards. Rookie quarterbacks. Here's a storyline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jackson Smith and Jigba, two for nineteen. The Look, it's one game. It's one game. But Tyler Lockett was healthy. I had been saying that he was healthy because they're managing his load and he had been warming up in all these preseason games. He was their best receiver by far. He had better numbers than Metcalf and JSN combined. Metcalf, huge disappointment. People should should be mad. That was the worst one I've ever done. That was the worst one. Um, I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> uh, you don't, no, have, to no, no, you don't have to be sorry. I had a YouTube comment that came through and they thought that I – was chewing tobacco on the show. <laughs> they thought that it said very professional of you to be chewing tobacco while doing a podcast. That's my life now. For those just for a couple more months. For those that are new to the show and don't understand, if you hear a whistle, if you hear something weird from me, if if I can't say the a letter S, I'm still dealing with my front tooth being knocked out. I'm sorry. I'm not chewing tobacco on the show. That's the craziest thing I've ever just, heard. Just having a or dip. off the show. For that or matter. off the show or ever. Yeah, I, I have never uh, partook. I think that would be about the billionth thing I could see you do. Could you, could you imagine? I'm going to start putting in a wad oh, mid-show. Yeah. Um, that whistle was amazingly loud. Yeah, it was good. Matt Caff and Jason. Jason, I thought that the time – was not yet here, but I'm not, I'm not willing to victory lap this. I'm just saying if what I said ends up true, which is that Metcalf and Lockett are the better receivers today, you will never be happy with Jason. And, and for Metcalf, he had the newly paid uh, Mr. Patrick Sertan on him. So that's a, that, if that sucks, Metcalf will be fine. I, that I, sucks, but that happens. Yeah, I had an expectation going into this week that Metcalf was was going to have a bad week. The JSN thing is legit, and Lockett looked great. Pittman had eight targets. He was four for thirty-one. He can't get downfield and doesn't need to, the way that Doolin, Pierce, and Adonai Mitchell will. That was the only worry, and that was the reason all three of us had Pittman regrettably lower in the yeah. rankings. It was not a lack of love for Pittman. It was a realization that. They're not going to throw that much. When they throw, he's inaccurate. And when he throws deep, it's not Pittman. So right. those three he, things mean that. He, he was the focal point of the passing offense. He was 40-plus percent of the targets. It's, eight of 19. It's insane that you end up with four for 31 with that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I mean, his his routes aren't as valuable. All right, really quickly, because we're, we're going very long today, but we needed to. Panic alarm levels. Christian Kirk, one for 30. Uh, Let's just go out of 10. Ten is uh, I'm go, I'm crying and I'm putting him on I'll my go six. I'm gonna go seven because Brian Thomas Jr. Look great. is awesome. Terry McLaurin, two for seventeen. I'm going with a nine. Yeah, I'm gonna go eight. Uh Calvin Ridley was three for fifty in this game against Chicago. Jalen Johnson. DeAndre Hopkins was one for eight. Give me Ridley. Uh Ridley uh is gonna be a seven. Will Levis was a knucklehead, man. I will my, go I will go four. On Ridley, but yeah, the, the theme of today's show is if you watched all the games yesterday, we don't have enough quarterbacks. No, in the NFL? Yeah. yeah. I think Ridley will be okay. Chicago's a great defense. The but, Jets are a great defense next week. Yeah, that's going to be the challenge, so maybe Jason's right. Josh Palmer, 2 for 15 oh. and was ejected. Get out of here. Cor Cortland Sutton, 12 mm -hmm. targets, 4 for 38. Palmer got McConkie'd. Yeah, maybe. I love McConkie. McConkie got Mick lucky because yeah. he. No. Yes, he did. No, he did yes, not. he did. No way. If he doesn't score a touchdown, give me his line. Uh, okay, let me look. That he up. had a short area touchdown. He was five for thirty-nine with a score. Okay, that is exactly the worry with McConkie. That's exactly what we said about McConkie. That if he gets in the end zone that week, you'll be happy, and if he doesn't, you'll be sad.
But his the the thing that I'm pointing out though is he had 44 percent of the wide receiver targets. He had a 29 percent target share in his first game. So this is a game against a, another you know not good offense in the Raiders and a great defense where they didn't have to throw the ball much. They're this not going to throw game. that much. I know, I know. They're they're, they're they're never going to want to, but there are going to be games where they need to. Disley, Hurst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Palmer, I, Quentin Johnston. I get it, and his his targets will be short. But a twenty nine percent target share in week one, I'm thrilled with. All right, uh, tight ends. We've already all of them. We've already talked about tight ends. All of them. Are you worried about any of the big ones? Because I am not. The Maybe. Well, I, I was kind of out on Kincaid. The only one I would be a little bit worried on from utilization was Kincaid. It, it was concerning to see him not be the two targets target leader let alone like he wasn't even they were in a negative game script yeah it, it was that one was concerning i'm not like you, you know pulling a rip cord yet but he is the of the of the big five he's the only one i'm you hold, just play him next, my breath on yeah 100 yeah, yeah. play yeah, him next week. all right um you got a bonus extra long episode today bonus and tomorrow guess what we get waivers and streaming mm -hmm. options it's a big show maybe the biggest waiver show of the year is week one when you get a you know, take your shot on some players. So we've got a big week two waiver show tomorrow. Check out the community, the ultimate dashboard, and tons of tools at jointhefoot.com. That'll do it. I'm going to go get some more tobacco. <laughs> get a spittoon over here. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.